you know, I went to school uh, in Philadelphia College. And in 1979, when I started, there was a, a good friend of mine who um, uh, we were both in the business school there. And he said, you know, if you're really interested in business, there's this guy, Warren Buffett, who you just should read anything that he writes. I had never heard of Warren Buffett in 1979, but I respected this guy. And, uh, and I started reading this stuff. And I was like, wow, this tremendous clarity to what he says and it makes sense and between taking you know the corporate finance uh, classes and accounting and all that you had this that was kind of practical applied experience so here's a guy who really was a hero of mine from you know an investing standpoint from back when you were in college yeah oh, from 1979 right. yeah. so i'm reading all this stuff and then i experienced you know some uh, decent success in investing and my fund uh, had had a, a a good track record and I knew that uh, Warren did this this auction, um, and it ben benefits uh, Glide Foundation in San Francisco. Wonderful charity. Sure. And I, I uh, happened to uh, uh, be a, a, a chair of a, a trust that met, met twice a year, once in San Francisco and once in Shanghai every year. And it was, gave me a good reason to kind of travel the world and get to know some folks. But I wanted to understand more about Glide before I did anything that you know, was a big ticket that I was going to write if I was going to do something like this. And so I was out at a trust meeting, uh, and uh, my assistant had reminded me that I wanted to visit the people at Glide and understand the thing. And she set the thing up. I finished my trust work. I spent half a day with the folks at Glide, and it just happened to be the last day of the auction that year. So it was going on while I was there. And I went down to, they invited me down to the uh, closing thing. They didn't know I was registered to bid on it. And, um, you know, I actually ended up winning the thing. And it was like, wow, <laughs> you know, this is, this is something. And, um, and it, it really, you know, after I had spent half a day with uh, 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 the folks at Clyde, I mean, just, a, again, great, great operation there. So that, that, was, that was terrific. What is the organization? What's that? Glide it, organization? Yeah, the Glide. They, uh, they, they give hope to the other otherwise hopeless. I mean, they, it's a wonderful organization, hundreds of volunteers that run both a soup kitchen and a, um, uh, you know, a healthcare clinic uh, in the toughest part of San Francisco. And it's, you know, known to everybody in the city, very efficiently run and, uh, you know, touches a lot of lives. And uh, Warren's uh, 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 wife, Susie, had been very active in the thing. Mm -hmm. And so that was where the, the interest came okay. from. Yeah. Um, but I ended up winning this thing and, and I wasn't sure, you know, how, what was going to happen. Um, but I, I'm back at my office and I get this phone call on a Tuesday morning and I pick up my phone and it's, it's Warren on the other end. And it's like, oh, geez, this is, this is something, you know, this is a zero. Yeah. And, and, uh, yeah, it was, it, and he, uh, it was terrific. And, uh, I, I had said the one thing that I wanted, I, I had wanted it to be anonymous and I want my name attached to it. And, uh, I also wanted to do it in Omaha instead of New York. It was set up to be a New York uh, lunch at uh, Smith & Walensky's, a, gr a great steakhouse in New York. So very public. And yeah, and, and he, he said, that, that's fine. And, uh, and then he said, well, when, when would you like to do it? And I said, well, you know, your schedule will dictate, you know, Mr. Buffett. And, uh, <laughs> and, he's, and he, he really was unbelievable because then he says, well, I could do tomorrow night, I could do Wednesday, I could do Thursday, and he rattles on four days in a row. And I'm like, ah. And I, I think it was, I picked the day yeah, two days later. And so I, I flew out to Omaha, and uh, I, I met him uh, in his office, and, and it clicked. I mean, it really clicked. And it was kind of interesting, because I think I, there's a bookend to my career. My first job at WR Grace I was an analyst, and then I happened to have a job as the uh, the aide to the CEO there, who was a guy by the name of Peter Grace. And I, I, he and I, Peter and I had a great relationship, but I viewed him more as a almost a monarch than a CEO. Um, and he had all the trappings of being the the you know uh, high and mighty CEO of a Fortune 50 company. And he had to go through six doors to get to his office, and you know everything was maximum <laughs> <Wow>. intimidation <laughs> and all the rest of that. I feel and, like and, 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 and then, you know, Warren's just like, I show up at headquarters, and he bounces out in the hallway and says, you know, great to meet you, Ted. Come on in. You know, grab a seat on the couch. And, you know, immediately put me at ease. And it was just, you know, great. We, we visited at the office for yeah, you know, maybe uh, 45 minutes, an hour. Uh, there were a number of connections. He'd actually met Peter Grace a couple of times, so we had some Peter Grace stories that we connected over. 
And then we ended up having like a, a three-hour dinner at Piccolo's, uh, and and uh, and it really really clicked. Then I I actually bid on it the following year, and and. Won it again for <laughs> one dollar more, and uh, and this time I I had a little bit more time to think about questions and mm -hmm. how did you? Like, that's my yeah. the first time because you only have a few days. You didn't yeah. expect to win. Yeah. How do you plan questions for Warren Buffett? <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. You know, I, I, I my mind was kind of racing, and but again, he has got this wonderful way of putting you at ease. Mm -hmm. You know, and it was just conversational, and and I had a lot of questions about you know investing and you know uh, lessons learned and you know. Uh, uh, philanthropic uh, uh, dispositions, that kind of thing. And I, there's a lot of natural topics that came out. I wish I would have had more time to buff and polish, but that's okay. Right. You know, and, but <laughs> lo and behold, yeah, yeah. yeah, but another year later, you know, and, I, and I've got it again. And then that one I did have a few weeks to think about. And I put together a legal pad of, you know, dozens and dozens of things that I wanted to hit on. And we did the, the same deal. We went to Piccolo's, and um, and it was it was terrific. And I, but I had probably three pages of, of questions, and at, at toward the end of the the uh, the dinner, I uh, I said, "Geez, I think I've hit everything just naturally off of my checklist." But I just want to look at my notes. Do you mind? And, and you can ask me anything if you if you want, Warren. And uh, he, uh, uh, as I'm looking down at my notes, checking stuff off. He says, "Yeah, I think I think you'd be a pretty good fit out here. Do you have any interest in in working at, at Berkshire?" I just I absolutely panicked. You know, this was like <laughs> this was is this, this, was, this was absolutely not what so I it didn't was come thinking. Up the first year. Oh no, no, okay. not not at all, not at all. And and I um uh in in my immediate reaction was, "There's no way this works." You know, I got this good gig back in Charlottesville, Virginia. I'm running a two billion dollar fund. Right. It's just you know me and two other people, and um uh. But you can't just dismiss it. I mean, this is your mm -hmm. your hero, and so I was like, "Wow, that's not what I expected." But but thank you, and I, I got to think about that. So he drives me to the airport uh, right after dinner and drops me off, and he gets out. <laughs> we both get out, and he says, "Yeah, that thing I I mentioned at, at dinner." Um, In case you forgot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he said, "He said, I mean, you don't have to decide now, but I mean, if you feel it in like two, three, five years." Yeah, you know, just let me know. And I'm like, mm -hmm. wow. You know, at the time he was, he had just turned 80. And I'm like, that's really something to have uh, that. And I, I, uh, <laughs> I really was still like, there's no way. This just does not make sense. And I, uh, I, I got back to Charlottesville and I gave a lot of thought to it. And, and I sent him a note that basically said, it just doesn't work because my kids at the time were in grade school and my, um, uh, and, you know, my family, they were, had roots in Charlottesville. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was running a, a large bankruptcy actually for WR Grace. I, it was, it was one of my investments in, in Peninsula. And it was a, a bankruptcy that I worked on for 10 years. And, uh, it, it and so I said I, I really need to see this through. There's probably another three years, and so I sent him a carefully worded letter, sent it off, and you know within an hour I've got this response from him. That's a, you know email letter on his letterhead that says you know thanks for the note, um, uh, and it was something to the effect of you know you can manage money from the moon as far as I'm concerned, so you can stay in <laughs> Charlottesville, and I like the fact that you want to finish up this bankruptcy. You can do that you know on on our watch, you know, that's, that's not a problem. It's like, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's like, oh, and, and then yeah, I started thinking more and more and, um, you know, and he, a day later he sent me a, you know, a, a proposal that kind of laid out how the mechanics would work and all the rest. And, and then I thought, you know, I'd been doing this, this fund at Peninsula for uh, 12 years. And once in a while, you just want to scrape the plate clean and, and do something new. And, uh, and so I, I decided, yeah, that, that'll work. And I, the only thing I asked was that, you know, I, I wanted to commit that I would come out to Omaha two days a week and, you know, be part of the team in Omaha. So I'd commute from Charlottesville, but Charlottesville would still meet my team, my, my home. And it's worked out beautifully. So I've been doing that for you know, a little over 10 years now.